Hi, this is Pastor Mike Wigan from Faith Lutheran Church. Welcome to your devotion and update for Thursday, August 27th, 2020. A couple of announcements. First of all, the 4th of October is a date you'll want to put on your calendar. It's on that Sunday that we will install Pastor Greg Pufal. He and his wife and their kids are here. Their children have started school, and it's been good to get to know them already. Hope that we can all get to know them even better. So the 4th of October, get that date on your calendar. More information will be forthcoming. Another announcement in regard to worship. A number have asked uh, the question, how does Fond du Lac returning to phase one affect worship here at Faith? Really, the, the answer is when we started worship again in June, in early June, uh, we looked at the phasing document. While it really doesn't say much about houses of worship, we still use their capacity numbers to gauge how many we would seat in our sanctuary. We didn't change those when Fond du Lac went to phase two. We could have, but we chose not to and take a wait and see approach. What that means is really our seating capacities are still in line with phase one. So it doesn't really change or affect what we're doing as far as in-person worship here. Another question that's come up is in regard to outdoor services. We did one last week. It went very well. Some have asked, could we do something like that again or more frequently? We're looking into that both on our COVID steering committee and board of elders. Uh, stay tuned. The devotion for today is recorded in Luke 15, and the theme of worship this week is on our passion for the lost, a reflection of God's passion for those souls that, without a deeper knowledge of their Savior, be on their way to hell. I'll start the devotion with this question. Who did you pray for today or yesterday? Did you pray for your family or maybe some friends that are struggling? Good. God wants you to do that. He invites you to do that. Did you pray for our country? Did you, you pray for the people in Kenosha and all of the difficulties that they're encountering right now? I hope you did. And God wants you to do that too. Here's a tougher question though. Did you pray for the lost? Those souls that Jesus wants so desperately to reach. God's souls that Jesus has put us here to reach. It's something we don't want to lose sight of. Because someone being eternally lost is a far greater tragedy than any of the things we're experiencing in society and, and here on and around us right now. The lost. The parable we're about to read is, is about how God wants us to have and develop a passion for the lost. A passion that says, as far as priorities go, we put everything else aside just for the sake of reaching even one lost. Listen now to the parable of the lost coin. Suppose a woman has ten silver coins and loses one. Does she not light a lamp, sweep the house, and search carefully until she finds it? And when she finds it, she calls her friends and neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me. I found my lost coin. In the same way, I tell you, there is rejoicing in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. May God give us the grace and the strength and the motivation to seek after the lost with genuine care with genuine love. To that end, we pray. Dear Heavenly Father, amidst all of the other problems and difficulties that we face on this earth, help us to remember that the greatest tragedy is when somebody doesn't come to know you. Help us, Lord, to reach all those that we can with that precious truth that the sending of your Son that is suffering and death means that everybody who calls on his name will be saved. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. God's richest blessings on the rest of the week and your weekend. We'll see you again soon.